The Batman is now running in theaters after a lot of anticipation, and this is going to be my spoiler-filled review of the film. I've already done my spoiler-free review that's on my channel, the link is in the description below, as well as over here, wherever is most convenient for you. And I can't wait to dig into this movie a lot more because there's a little, you know, some stuff to talk about, I'm sure. The Batman is a film that I loved immensely. I've thought about it for the last couple of days ever since I first saw it, and it's just gotten better and better for me as the days have progressed. It's now one of my favorite comic book movies of all time, honestly, and as a huge fan of the Batman character, I feel like it just does some things with that persona incredibly well that I've been wanting to see in a Batman movie in a long, long time. In particular, in my spoiler-free review, I talked about how the film utilizes his more detective uh, analytical side and how it is used to decipher what the Riddler is doing. They've gone with a very Zodiac Killer kind of thing with the Riddler, and I really like that. He's leaving little clues and codes behind at the scene, and essentially those are gonna lead into hopefully the next murder, and what he's trying to do as a result of that. Except in the case of the Zodiac Killer, he was sending the letters with warnings and making phone calls and stuff like that. In this case, he's live streaming his events, and I don't really know, it's like a Twitch sort of thing, because at one point you see heart reactions coming up from below, there's that button there, and he has a few hundred followers as a result of that. I thought that was really well handled. There's a little bit in here of this movie and how it's handling technology and how modern technology is being used as a form of like, you know, pseudo cyber warfare in this movie. And I really like that. I like that angle that the Riddler is using. And eventually, as his plans come more and more into fruition, it involves the other corrupt individuals who exist within Gotham City. His intentions seem fairly well reasonable. He's trying to weed out the corruption. He's trying to weed out people who are at the top, who are just constantly eating off of the poorer and the lower class people that are in Gotham City. And that particular aspect of it, I think, is really great. I think it adds a lot to his motivation on what he's trying to do. Eventually, as the film goes to a third act, it does something which I'll talk more about later, but I've seen some comments on it, how it betrays that. I don't necessarily agree with it, but again, we'll get there. You don't see a lot of Bruce Wayne in this movie. Pattinson is in the bad suit for about 90% of it. For the most part, he plays the brooding Dark Knight. Whenever he's Bruce Wayne, there's not much of a difference. He acts kind of like a jaded emo teenager, which makes sense. This is still year two of him being Batman. He still hasn't learned how to master the two different sides of it. Because it's easy looking at other iterations who've had a little more time to get accustomed to it that they know how it is to be Bruce Wayne, the billionaire who will have a lot of ladies around him and he'll be able to basically get into any place he wants and he has all the money in the world. That has been established in other movies, but it's a much more seasoned version of the character. In this case, he's not quite there yet. Even when he appears to other people, he appears as this weird, you know, hair wet, not combed at all personality who's like, okay, that's Bruce Wayne, I guess. You're not really doing much, Mr. Wayne, for this city. You could have, could be, but he's not at that point yet. I like the film's handling of this. He's not supposed to be there yet. And you can make the argument that with something like The Dark Knight, it's only been a year, but Bruce has already been able to do that pretty well. Yeah, sure, but it's a much more seasoned version of the character who's been through a lot of other stuff. This guy, not quite as much yet, but as the film comes to a close, I feel like they're going to do that a lot more, and so I'm interested in seeing what that journey is going to be like. But I think Pattinson is a phenomenal Batman. I think he does an excellent job. And in the moments that we get with him as Bruce Wayne, as this one who's just starting to break out of that jaded mold that he's within. I think the film does a really, really good job. I really love this portrayal through and through. And again, never want to hear a slight about this actor again. He is so damn good in this. Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman, I thought was great. And I really like the fact that they tied her to Falcone. I'm going to talk about Falcone because John Turturro is someone I couldn't really discuss in the spoiler-free review. His role is very related to the story as in what he's up to. And I think he was incredible. I've really loved John Turturro as an actor for many, many years. And even if it's something like the Transformers movies, I've always found him to be entertaining. But in this case, he plays a very menacing version of Falcone. 
like again with the Riddler, something the film does really well is make these villains menacing. You don't want to be in the same room with them. And his connection to Selena and that her mom used to work for him and then she got pregnant because of him and then eventually, you know, she had her killed. All of that stuff, I think it's dark. It definitely adds a layer to her character and that personal connection that she creates as a result of it with the entire story going on to find an informant who could give up the Riddler, I thought it was really, really great. Eventually you find out Falcone is the informer, which was a really good reveal. It also leads to a lot of other reveals about how much this guy has had to do with a lot of other events that have happened, including potentially murdering the Waynes. There's an interesting angle they created with the Waynes in this one, didn't they? I like the idea that these people, Thomas and Martha Wayne, they, they were good, upstanding individuals, although they, they made some deals that were not necessarily the best. In particular, Thomas Wayne made a deal with Salvatore Moroni, essentially to have a reporter silenced because he had some dirt on Martha Wayne's entire family history. But it turns out that during this time of re-election as a mayor that was happening. However, the movie plays it off as like, oh, it's not. he wasn't doing it to become the mayor. Like, he could have easily forfeited that. It wasn't about the public image he was worried about. He was worried about the public image of your mom. Alfred says so. And something I really liked also is how they explored Alfred's dynamic with Bruce. Obviously, he's having a hard time connecting with them. He's like, hey, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to be there for you. You don't have any family. And Bruce is like, get away from me, man. You're not even a Wayne. And they have a few moments like that and then I kept thinking wow the disconnect here is crazy because for a while I was wondering like is there going to be a moment where it all comes together and after Alfred survives a Riddler threat and he's in the hospital talking to Bruce about this I loved that moment I thought it was a beautifully done moment and it just it was really wonderful like it it cemented that dynamic that Bruce and Alfred have and it made me see Andy Serkis as a really good Alfred and again, I can't wait to see more of him going forward. I want to talk about the action sequences for a minute because I feel like I didn't touch on them enough. They're really great. They're very brutal. There's a lot of really great action and hand-to-hand -hand combat that we see on screen. And I got to talk about that chase sequence with the Batmobile and the Penguin. That was intense. My heart was genuinely pounding through that thing. And that's not always something that happens in the theater with me. Like, in this case, I was genuinely... Like, gripping armrests over there and I saw it in IMAX so the moment in the movie right when it's starting up you see the Batmobile charging up the engine revving that place was shaking and I, I loved it it was so so great I'm just I'm looking forward to seeing it again maybe in Dolby this time depending on what the sounds like because I just want to see this thing just shake the entire roof it'll be amazing but yeah that scene was incredible beautifully shot as i already talked about in the spoiler free review greek fraser cinematography is unparalleled let's talk about the one thing that a lot of people have had some comments on which is the third act now eventually when you get to the riddler and he's eventually caught falcon is shot dead you have a bit of a moment where batman talks to him and you're basically given the implication that he knows that batman is bruce wayne Although, that doesn't seem to last very long because it seems like he's trying to get to Bruce Wayne, but he doesn't quite know that Batman is Bruce Wayne yet. He knows a lot, just not that part. And it seems Batman missed a clue because there is a bunch of vans that have been parked along the shoreline and they've all been rigged to blow. Had he found out about that, he could have stopped it, but it's sort of like a snowman thing where it's like Mr. Police like, gave you all the clues kind of thing. And yeah, it was like all there. You could have stopped this. But no, it was not going according to plan. And so the whole shoreline is basically bombed and the city is flooded. Now, I remember a lot of people looking at this. I saw some comments over the last day or so on how it sort of betrays the realism of the movie. I think the film does a really good job of balancing realism and comic book aspects of it because the film at the end of the day is based on a comic book. And I like the fact that Reeves didn't forget those things as he was making the movie. There'll be little things here and there that make you remember that at the end of the day, you're still watching a movie that is based on a DC Comics character. Uh, especially the wingsuit scene. Like, there's a point where he has to escape the GCPD. Fantastic scene, by the way, with him and Gordon, who is also really funny. I'll talk more about him just towards the end. But and when he finally escapes, 
he doesn't quite stick the landing. He crashes into this pole and it just, the way he crash lands, that should have killed him. When he survived that, I was like, okay, nice little reminder that at the end of the day, you're watching a superhero movie. So the city flooding, it actually didn't, didn't seem completely outlandish to me because it made sense even then in the realism of it. It was like, yeah, okay. It's, in a way, it's like you're trapping whoever you want le- next on your target in, in terms of powerful individuals. You're trapping them all in this one location in Gotham Square Garden, which, uh, you know what, that's a riff on. And eventually he tries to have the new mayor elect assassinated with the army that he's generated with other Riddler goons. I like that entire bit. I like the finale that takes place. Batman goes to town on them, just beats the shit out of a bunch of them. It's pretty awesome to look at. Eventually Catwoman joins in as well. And then Batman takes a beating. He really gets his ass whooped a couple of times. He takes a lot of shotgun barrels to the chest. Thank God that thing is bulletproof. And eventually, in order to save the people down below who are caught in the flooding and the wreckage of the stadium, eventually he goes down there and you have this really great scene where he decides to put vengeance on the back burner he's like listen this entire thing that i've been doing so far has been all about me wanting to you know find vengeance or to be vengeance i go around saying i'm vengeance but i have to be more than that to these people and i really like the fact that the film eventually comes to that moment of realization with him and he appears more like a hero rather than a vigilante to the gotham uh, gothamites I was going to say, yeah, which I thought was really, really great. I thought I think that really brought together his uh, hero arc really well. But eventually, when Riddler is in prison and he sees his entire thing has failed, he is suddenly t- talked to by someone. There's someone in another cell who starts talking to him. And at first I thought, hmm, wonder who this guy is. And eventually, he, I forgot the exact riddle he says, but he says something... And at the end of it, he says the word clown. You know, like It's like the society sort of sees you like a clown. And my theater erupted a little bit because they were like, wait, is this what we're doing? Now, you don't get a close look. It's Barry Keoghan. Yes, it is. He's starring as unnamed Arkham prisoner. Although, yes, Matt Reeves has confirmed that this is, in fact, the Joker. And I was talking to a friend of mine earlier on what iteration they're trying to go with. Maybe I'm wrong here, but I saw the makeup. It was very scary. Like, it looked at his flesh had burned off. I was thinking, is this death of the family? Are they going to try that look with him? Because I feel like that would fit Keoghan, honestly speaking. I think he's a great actor. I think he's a really, really great presence to have, especially as a negative character. Like, he's just done a great job with stuff like killing off a sacred deer and in a, maybe as a hero in Eternals. But I think he's a very good actor. And I think that he would be a really great Joker, honestly. But I'm curious if they're going with Death of the Family. I don't really know if we needed the cameo in this one. I feel like it was going to be something leading into the next movie. But I didn't mind it. It felt like the end of Batman Begins when you get that little stinger with the calling card. Except in that case, it was kind of like, okay, that was just a little, you know, set up for the what's to come for, for the Batman. In this case, you get a full scene. But still, it didn't bother me too much. It was that universe setup moment that was like, eh, of course, you gotta have one of those because it didn't feel like this was always going to be a one-off. So, sure, it wasn't any different from Joker when you have Bruce Wayne come in and then the film ends with his parents getting murdered. I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> just those little things to remind you just kind of what the universe that we live in is, especially like the DC universe. But I'm very excited to see what happens going forward. I wanted to mention one thing about Gordon. I loved him. I thought his character was great, but I also really liked his approach to Batman, especially like, you know, saying man a lot. He keeps calling him man. Um, Lots of great moments with him. Lots of great humorous moments with him. I laughed so incredibly hard during Thumb Drive. (laughs) This is like one of the funniest lines of a Batman movie, honestly. I love that. Uh, I liked when they walk into the orphanage and Bruce is like, no guns. And then he's like, yeah, man, that's that's your thing. And he still has his gun out with his flashlight. Like, yeah, sure. I mean, he's not going to follow your code, B-Man. But yeah, really great stuff. I loved 
Colin Farrell as the Penguin, once again, I thought he was really great. I loved how he's the one guy who knows Spanish. I like that. He's like, hey, what do you mean? You guys didn't take Spanish in school? It's like, it's La Rata Elada, not El, it's L. Love the movie. I'm sure I missed out quite a bit, but really I want to talk about the core stuff. So, The Batman, have you guys seen it? What did you guys think about it? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Let me know. What did you think of the Joker reveal? Are you excited to see where it goes in the future? All of your thoughts. You know, it's wide open. The comment section is your playground. As always, if you like this, guys, please do subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. And if you like this, please do subscribe if you haven't yet. And I'll see you guys at the movies.